Donnybrook is made possible by the members of the Nine Network. Hey, thank you so much for joining us for this edition of Donnybrook. Good to have you aboard. I think we're the only station in town not warning you to go to the grocery store and get <laughs> eggs and bread and whatever else. But we do want to encourage you to learn more about the Gatesworth because they support our program each and every week. And we're very grateful for that. Let's meet the panelists. We welcome back the media veteran herself, Wendy Weiss from KTRS and beyond. He's Bill McClellan from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. One of our founders, Ray Hartman, and from STLMag.com and the St. Louis American, Alvin Reed, who you didn't wear your uh, boots or anything in anticipation of the big storm, did you? <laughs> no, but when you said that, though, it reminded me that I don't have any beer in the house. And so oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm here thinking, God. like, oh, man, I'll, I'll uh, joke it aside. Most <laughs> people get milk. Alvin gets beer. All right. Getting to know you. Oh, wow. A hey, true story. I'm sorry. Right yeah, when you said that. The Cowboys are playing the Rams. Oh, it's just I got to get ready. Cowboys playing the Rams. Oh, That's a big Saturday one. Saturday night. Well, we'll talk about that maybe a little later. Let me ask you about a plan. I thought this was interesting, Alvin, because since we spoke last week, and last week we talked about how it looked as though Steve Stenger, the county executive, was giving at least tacit approval to this Better Together plan, which might, with statewide approval, merge the city and the county after 2020. Chief John Belmar of the St. Louis County Police floated his plan like 48 hours after Stenger, and he said, as opposed to merging all the police departments, let's have a merger between the St. Louis County Police Department and the St. Louis City and leave the other 50 municipalities and their police departments alone. What do you think about that plan and why did he do this? Well, I mean, I, Chief Belmar is an excellent police officer, I'm, I'm sure, and an intelligent man. I don't think he came up with this one by himself. And quite frankly, I think Tim Fitch may have had a little something to do with this. I think I, I, I think Tim has plans on running for county executive uh, four years from now, regardless of who his opponent might be. And he's looking at this merger and being forced upon St. Louis County, and I'm sure most of his constituents, and he represents part of Kirkwood too, um, aren't with it. So he's trying to kind of find a way to maneuver around it and just put himself and the county in a better situation than it would be left in if this merger plan were to go through. Well, I think he did it. I think he did it. Pretty effectively. I mean, I what I saw him, you know, sort of outline in that in the article was much more appealing to me and appetizing to me than the big gigantic overhaul. We're not even recognizable anymore in terms of consolidating the county police with the city police. That that's something that makes sense to me. Well, I think it's kind of puzzling in that, that and I don't remember, I thought it was when Tim Fitch was police chief that he was talking a lot about the need to raise the standards of, so you know, of small police departments. If you're going to merge any entities with the county, it's, it ought to be some of the smaller police departments, I think, who, because a lot of them don't have the resources, to pay enough and have enough training and so forth. And as an interconnected community, all of us are affected. You can't say, well, it's just, it's just uh, you know, XYZ town's business because we all drive around all over the place. And so I think you could make a much stronger case for, for merging some of the smaller municip municipal uh, police departments than, than the city and county. I don't, I don't really get this one. You know, with the city and the county, th those are big organizations and with pensions like I don't know what you do with the pension plan of the city if you, if you merge that with the county or if the people stay in the same plans on the other hand the city is always saying it has problems uh, because of residency getting new police officers and this sort of merger would probably help them but it sounds so unwieldy to me hmm. I don't see why Belmar would have to mm, Try and ingratiate himself to Tim Fitch. I mean, assuming maybe oh, Tim Fitch might be the next county executive, because doesn't Belmar work for a police commission? 
Yeah. And isn't yeah. it almost I was, impossible I wasn't, in the I wasn't States saying I don't, I don't think they ingratiate. I mean, I yeah. think they're friends. Right, right. Well, I wasn't saying and he was were, doing it for Fitch. I, uh, compadres. Alvin, I just right. said that Fitch had talked well, about Alvin said. But because well, no, Fitch, I, was saying, I don't what think I'm he saying was. Is, I think, you know, they, they could have been sitting around having a beer. Yeah, but uh, not at your house. Because <laughs> yeah, there's no Alvin, beer anymore. But, but no, I think that he, everybody is reacting in some way to this. And... And, okay. All right. And, and while so you're on the, that, all right. let me ask about Bill DeWitt the third, the president of St. Louis Cardinals. He's already said though we got to go with this plan. How, how do you feel about that? He's one of our leading business persons. He has a right to speak out on a major matter affecting the area, doesn't he? Oh, he's got every right, and I guess the Cardinals do too. But to use the birds on the bat and this like big time scrap we're about to have, one I think is unwise. Two, I think it's unfair. Um, many of the business leaders are all for this, but the Cardinals are an entertainment agency, and I know they're doing all kind of economic development that the good people of St. Louis like, are helping, you know, put together right across the street there, Ballpark Village. I think the, the Cardinals be best be stay out of this because, you know, I mean, listen, I'm, I'm ready to fight this. There are people that are ready to fight this, and and people would would tell well, the when Cardinals. You say fight I, I'm ready to fight it too, Alvin. Uh, they're a corporate citizen, and, yeah. a, and a corporate citizen ought to be able, I disagree with them, but, but to speak to what they think is good for the community. And well, when but, you say fight this, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a week behind. Uh, are you talking like Fort Sumter? I mean, are, are people are that angry that they, they are really, truly going to like, yes, get up yes. and on? Yes. They're well, that angry yes. about this, this. This is going to be a fight that will be taken from St. Louis County out into the state rural areas. Right, right. It, it is already formulating that it is being talked about saying like, listen, we are not going to defeat this just sitting on our tails in St. Louis County. Well, um, we are going to have to well, I, I let think our I, person, move our bodies out here and talk right. to people in these other areas. Well, I think Bill DeWitt, yeah. I mean, I think when you when you think of the golden rule, yeah. uh, the Cardinals are the go they are the yeah. embodiment of the golden rule. I mean, the, the one with all the gold makes all the rules. <laughs> right. And he has yeah. every right, as Bill said, I mean, if, if the businesses are the ones that have so much at stake. And if, if anybody has anything at stake, well, it's the But go ahead. I, oh, I'm sorry. I know he was trying well, to. No, I, go ahead. I think Bill DeWitt's concern is that there has been crime around Bush Stadium. Right. And I don't think that the St. Louis Police Department has been able to exactly. patrol downtown St. Louis. And he's seeing all that money in St. Louis County and thinks, hey, let's share some of that with downtown St. Louis. I don't care that whether DeWitt says something. You know, whatever. He's got a right to his opinion. And, 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 as Alvin says, that he might pay a price with some Cardinal fans that are upset mm -hmm. about it. The, one of the things I would point out to us is we don't know what this is. I mean, that's one of the things. They haven't actually officially laid it out. I mean, I guess you could say you're opposed in, in principle to any kind of merger. I suppose that's one way they to look at it. They pretty much laid it out, but, right? Well, I don't think they have. And I think that, that well, you know, what, I, what, I think what, there's think enough. fake news? What's going on? <laughs> no, I mean, I think that the, that the details, uh, a lot of what the, has have not been laid 33 out. wards? Well, the, I'm, okay, I'm and, just saying, and, I think we the, are. And the people outstate get to okay. vote this merger I get, I get on the that. people here? I get that. And I mean, I that's have, enough right there. I have some problems, but I'm just saying, I think it's a little early for people to be completely. No, it's too late. Well, <laughs> I, I, I don't. I, I mean, okay. I say well, I'm leaning against right. it because of the reasons I stated before. Well, but including the statewide vote. That's a big, yeah. the process yeah. and the disingenuousness of a lot of this. There's a lot of things I don't like, but I'm also more open right. to a united government well, than see, some other folks. Th are. This sounds like St. Louis, right? I don't like this and I don't like that, but oh, oh yeah, I'll sign off on it. I either say that. This is one where, look, you either for it or you're against it. Well, there ain't no mamby-pamby this time. Well, we go to Kansas City, Wendy, where uh, Dave Helling of the Kansas City Star wrote a piece yesterday, and he said that he thinks that in Kansas City, where, again, this is a city that, thanks to Rex Singfield, has to vote every five years on an earnings tax mm -hmm. and has been told uh, that they cannot ban plastic bags and their minimum wage was changed by the General Assembly, he thinks basically the Kansas Cityans will vote against the merger of the city and the county because they don't think that, uh, p that statewide interests should be deciding local municipal affairs. Do you think that's what's going to happen there? What I think is really interesting, and bear with me, this whole thing, it reads like a Tennessee Williams novel. You know, that St. Louis is this fading, aging beauty and we can't take care of ourselves anymore, so somebody's going to step in and act as our custodian. Mm -hmm. And in this particular case, it's the entire state of, mm -hmm. of Missouri. And it is highly and incredibly offensive. 
And I, I was, I, I almost, I would have sent Mr. Helling a, a bouquet of flowers. That's how happy I was to read his piece in the Kansas City Star. Uh, because he's talking about the fact that if they can do it to St. Louis, you better believe they're going to eventually do it to Kansas City. Sure. Yeah. They're going to do it to Springfield, which is growing and growing, and uh, and any other and, any and other I, big city in this in the state. And so. I do think that, and Alvin made this point last week pretty well. I thought that, that there is going to be a sort of there, but for the grace of God goes I argument to be made to other places. Uh, but clearly, the the strategy of the folks pushing this is is to try to capitalize on the fact that we're going to have a lot of Rex Singfield's money and 4.7 million people are unaffected. I think Kansas City is going to be one of the toughest sells. For that reason, also, Kansas City likes to make this bogus claim that they're uh, Missouri's largest city when we all know that St. Louis is a bigger certainly area than Kansas City. But I think then we're going to be able to have our bogus claim to be in a bigger city than we are. And um, I think there will be some natural opposition in Kansas City and probably in St. Charles County that is going to be harder than some of the other parts of, well, of you, rural you know, you, uh, Missouri. You talk about people not having an interest. I was talking to uh, your colleagues from KMOX, uh, John Hancock and Mike Kelly, who, who are consultants on this, and they were indicating that an argument that will be made to outstate is just like in Michigan, where the state had to bail out a bankrupt Detroit. You know, this, if unless we step in, St. Louis will go bankrupt and you'll have to pay for it. It's going to be a nasty fight because you start talking about Detroit and, oh man, I mean, well, that's it, why it, I was those predicting people last week in that St. Louis, this, this is going to be a nasty fight and they're going to make it seem like people outside have a vested interest in it. That's why I said last well, week. I thought but it was good. I don't remember. I mean, St. Louis has been the crown jewel. Yeah, okay, we've had our troubles lately. But for the longest time, in terms of tourism and, and interest, I mean, St. Louis, we carried a fairly significant portion of the low. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, St. Louis County is the economic engine of the state. We just learned that uh, two weeks ago when the story came out. If you look at the dollars that are generated, among all the counties in the state, St. Louis County is by far and away the big one. So I want to ask you, uh, Ray, do you think when uh, Richard Chaffetz, the benefactor mm -hmm. for St. Louis University, a guy who was a great story, you know, right. he was so pleased when Father Paul Reiner took care of his tuition when he was down and out, he later donated all the money for the Chaffetz Arena, and now I think he's given another $15 million recently for some academic help. He told the St. Louis Business Journal, that he'd like to help an effort to bring the NBA to St. Louis. You're a huge NBA fan. Think it's going to happen? No. And I think Richard, uh, Mr. Chavis has done an amazing, really underrated how much he's done for this community um, with the Chavis. And just, he's been a great, right. you know, uh, citizen as, as far as St. Louis goes. Um, I think it's very little chance. Um, there's only, I believe there's 13 U.S. markets and then Toronto that have an NBA and an NHL team. And unless the Blues are planning to go, uh, particularly now that um, St. Louis is no longer a corporate headquarters town and we're, like Bill likes to say, a branch office town, um, there's, no, there's no market as small as St. Louis that, has, that is able to support an NBA and an NHL team. And so before you even start talking about the fans and everything, you got to look at the corporate base. And when you add in the fact that the Cardinals are so big, for our size, almost like a, a, a franchise and a half. I just don't think there's the, the corporate base that would attract the NBA, and that's what they look at first. All right, two things. One, the NBA season, basically, you're, you're mid-October. Even if the Cardinals won the World Series, they're, they're, they're done by the time they really get going. Spring, you know, if we had a decent team or something like that, maybe they'd be playing long into June. We would see. I think it could work only in that it would be rescuing another franchise. And right now, about your only hope would be New Orleans. Uh, you missed out on an opportunity with Atlanta. They were floundering a few years back, but got new ownership and got their uh, gym situation together. I think if an NBA team came here, it could play. The, the first thought was they would play in Enterprise Center, whatever it's called now. All right, they could play in Chaffetz, and you would just have a, a smaller, you know, auditorium to play in. And the tickets, you know, wouldn't be cheap. 
but I think that you could generate enough revenue that that it could support a team. And and I just I the gloom and doom I think is not in the numbers. The gloom and doom is that I think people are still falling into the to the fallacy that white people won't go see NBA basketball games, and that's being proven different in other cities. The fastest growing league internationally and nationally is the National Basketball yeah. Association. Yeah. So and to to turn your back I, on an opportunity I, to, right. to do it is doesn't make sense. And to me. I don't want to go all yeah. Pollyannish yeah. on you, Ray. I yeah. think you have some yeah. good numbers, but. I mean, Pittsburgh has three major league teams. Cleveland does. Minnesota, uh, Minneapolis, even though they're much bigger than we are now, but uh, they weren't always. Charlie, and I think that, you know, if, if some guy in Chicago has a lot of money, he says he wants to bring the NBA here, I say, hey, well, go I, for well, it, man. I'd be, I'd, I'd, be the, I'd be very happy about it. I'm telling you that we don't have a lot of its TV market. There's no market as small. We're the 21st ranked market now, and there is no market as the closest is Denver, and beyond that, there's right. nobody close right. to but, us in size we that can to, support okay. an NBA but, and an NHL team. It's we're just about the reality. To have, we're about to have the most popular and successful MLS team in the history of soccer. Well, there's I mean, you know, yeah, that, and wait, the XFL. You know, yeah, right. saying, I'm yeah, not all these, all, I'd all love these things are going to all it's these things happening. are going to prosper, but the NBA is going to fail. No, I'm just uh, telling I'd you. I'd be thrilled I'd just say. to see SLU get back to where they were on the Charlie Spoon <laughs> Hour. No, I'm serious. I'm sure. <laughs> where, where that was something yeah. people wanted to go to, and, and they were drawing, you know, in the top ten nationally. The, yeah. the right. Chaffetz cannot be an NBA arena. And I'm just saying, yeah. I think it, I'd be the happiest guy in town if they came. I'm telling you, we just not going to, we, we ought to not kid ourselves. Unless the Blues left. If the Blues move somewhere else, that'd be, then well, the there'd be enough. The Blues can't move somewhere else we've got to New goalie. Well, I'm, right. right. No, I, I'm right. I, I would love it. Around, it, it. And me and 14 yes. people would be down Just, there to see the Lakers and LeBron James come to St. Right. Louis. Okay. No, that's All not right. true. Uh, that's not yeah. true. <laughs> I think St. Louis I'd sports fans are fine. Yeah. It's just, it's I'd just be there. don't have the market size. Hey, Bill, I want to ask you about our new prosecuting attorney who is really getting headlines by making a lot of changes as the new chief prosecutor for St. Louis County, Wesley Bell. Among other things, he said that he's uh, not going to prosecute criminally guys who are behind on their child support. He's not going to prosecute people who have marijuana, or at least 100 grams or less. But when he was asked this week by reporters at a press conference, are you going to reopen the Michael Brown case, he didn't answer. He wouldn't respond to that question, wouldn't even say, hey, we're studying it. Do you think he should open the Michael Brown case and look at it once again? No, I, I, I don't. I mean, I think it's like uh, picking at a scab. I think you just have to think, you know, the, the, for many people, in, including me, exactly what happened out there, we don't know. But the Justice Department, you know, under President Obama looked at it, and uh, Eric Holder, and, and th they didn't indict. And I, I think, I, I don't like in retrospect the way it was handled, you know, let everybody talk. and, and that tends to kill a narrative, even if it's true, if you have people who are clearly not telling the truth, espousing it. Looking back, I don't like the way it was handled, but I don't think it would make any sense right now to try to reopen it and rehash the whole thing. I don't think anybody would be satisfied with how it came out anyway. I, you know, I wish he would say he wasn't going to do it because I am just, I'm, <laughs> he's not going to do it. So I wish we could just move on. I wish yeah. he would just say he's not going to do it, but he's not going to do it. I mean, he's, he, okay. there's, it well, wouldn't help him politically. It wouldn't help the region. It wouldn't help anything. No. It would just be, it, it, it's been done. Well, it might help if he corroborates the Holder report. If he comes out with a report and it, it says that Darren Wilson was guilty of murder, then, wow, I can't imagine where, where the region would go from there. But, you know, I, I think that there is this fog in St. Louis of doubt about what happened. And I think that the grand jury looked at it and the FBI and the Justice Department had a very thorough investigation and a re report that was released in March of 2015. But I still think that they're, including some of his supporters, want it to be reopened. And so I think he's got to address that at some point. I think that it was, I mean, I think it was almost, it was all but implied that, and I think it, it was probably just a, sort of the whispers, you know, just that undercurrent when he was running, you know, that, hey, this is a possibility, this could happen. He probably, he may never have addressed it at all, but, but because there was just, you know, that undercurrent that maybe 
people thought, oh, okay, any day now he's going to, he, you know, he's going to say that he's going to reopen the case. Yeah. But I, I think I think what what Bill said is is right. What bothers me is now Ferguson is is part of our identity because we have picked at the scab and now it's a scar and we are scarred by it. I mean, I do think that that it is part of our identity as much as the arch. If you go out. Mm. And I, honestly, I do. And I think, that's, well, that's, what, right. that's, that's what's I, troubling to ahead, people. Right. Well, first of all, I think it would be pointless to bring it up. I just, you know, and, and yes, Ferguson is the gift that keeps on giving. It's in convention business, it's planned years out, and tourism. There is no question. And by, and by the way, the stuff they're talking about doing with the Unigov isn't going to have any impact on that, right? whether they want to change some numbers around. Uh, that isn't going to change our national problem. And we just got to try to build back from it. I don't, I, I, Wesley Bell never said he was going to reopen it as a candidate. I do think that a lot of people, I was one of them that was not satisfied with the process. I think it's one of the reasons Wesley Bell won. And so to the extent that there were people that didn't feel that the process played out the way it should have, regardless of what you think of the actual outcome, um, there were a lot of people dissatisfied, and I think it's one of the reasons Wesley Bell won the election. Well, well it, I think people must have been dissatisfied, including Bell himself, because one of the very first mm -hmm. acts he took when he got into office oh. was to mm -hmm. fire the woman who brought the evidence to which, the grand jury, which, which seems to me that he was upset with what happened. So if he right. was upset, mm -hmm. Well, that no, doesn't that mean you want to read it. So. You don't necessarily well, want to well, read no, it. Because no. if I had won that election, I may have just said, like, okay, you're, you, you're, you, you're fine with me, but you got to go. That's just one of those things that, and this is not a campaign promise, I just don't, you're not going to be involved in the Knicks, somebody got shot in this some crazy case in St. Louis County. So you're not going to work here. I'm not saying that's what happened, but I'm just saying I could see that. And then, hey, folks, the, the, we better stop blaming Ferguson for everything else, Ferguson really is going to be a cloud over our heads. Forget all this. It's we don't have any tourism because of Ferguson, and this is our, because of Ferguson. August 2014 was a long time ago, folks, and I know that people still have feelings about it, but that is not what is holding this region back. And and Unigov would not bring us right. together. Right. <laughs> you know, really? I, 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 pretending it's August the 24th. And, and it makes, I'm not, it makes no sense. Well, I said that. No, but I don't. All I was saying, Alvin, is what, to up. Wendy's point. I, I wouldn't. And I agree. We can't grow, count. You know, wring our hands about Ferguson, but we ought to be aware that it's it, it did have its impact. Uh, I, I think it ha it still it, has an impact, yes. at least locally, uh, yeah. maybe nationally. Well, I hope it. And we Wendy? had problems before. Uh, no, before you would think you would think yeah. nothing like in anything right. racially bad had ever happened in St. Louis for mm. 400 right. years. Well, let me say, right. <laughs> little plug for our friend Ron <laughs> Himes this weekend at the uh, Wash U Edison Theater. He will open the uh, play Canfield Drive which was written by some Rutgers professors, and I think it's making its uh, world debut wow, here in St. Louis wow. this weekend. So, Okay, Wendy, a pastor who was handing out bologna sandwiches to the homeless was arrested because he wasn't uh, complying with health codes. When he got to court, Judge Jimmy Edwards, the public safety director, dropped the charges. But the pastor has decided to sue, mm -hmm. saying that by handing out the sandwiches and, and then being stopped doing that, his First Amendment rights were abridged by the city of St. Louis. Do you agree with this lawsuit? No, I think, I, 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 shame on you. Shame on you, Pastor, uh, with the New Life Evangelistic Center. They let you walk. Uh, they definitely could have pursued it, the city and, and, and Jimmy Edwards, as you said. Uh, but they, they, they let him walk. They appreciated the, you know, the very noble idea behind what he was trying to do. But in the interview, he said you know, that I am not able to I don't have the resources to, to make lunches for people. Well, then, you know what? Go to work for, a, for an organization that does have those resources and make an impact in a different way. But I think to sue the city of St. Louis is absolutely ridiculous. I, I, I agree with the sue, and that is silly. But, you know, in, in, in the way things would work in, the, in we were truly just world, we should all be making 10 or 20 sandwiches and taking them someplace and giving them to the homeless or poor or whatever. And if we got a ticket because it wasn't healthy and sanitary, then we just get our ticket and we pay it. But after, but because you are making an act, you're making a statement that what is right is bigger than this silly health law or whatever. And I'm not talking about industrial tuna canning or anything. I'm talking about handing out some sandwiches. I, I agree with Al, but, and I'm a little more supportive of the lawsuit in the sense that 
You know, the way the city has treated New Life Evangelistic Center, I mean, it's easy to see why New Life said, All right, you're going to sue us and you're going to put us out of business. The heck with you. Well, I think I, I have a different view. I mean, New Life. Yeah. I, I'm for okay. the lawsuit. No, yeah, right. There you go. No, you won me I'm over. Not. You I mean, like beer? I like you beer. <laughs> you haven't got any beer, but you like it. I'm not for the lawsuit. I, and I do think that organizations, I mean, it's great if somebody, you know, the city's not going to run around busting somebody, no, some good Samaritan that, that. that makes 10 sandwiches and goes downtown. But the fact of the matter is that New Life Evangelistic Center is an organization that should be able to comply with health laws and health department That's laws right. are there for a reason. And just because someone's homeless doesn't mean they aren't entitled to be protected by those laws when it comes to an organization giving that's out right. food. I, now, I don't okay. think that's... Now, on to the most important topic, and that is it's a football weekend with lots of playoffs, but right. snow is on the way. Ray, right. do you think that those playoff games should be interrupted with um, announcements from meteorologists who are telling us about the... <laughs> Well, Snowmageddon? Uh, to the extent I'm watching them, I don't. I mean, I understand. They, they got a job to do. And if their problem is, uh, they certainly have a reason and to they scroll. charge higher rates when they're on storm mm -hmm. covers, right? right? Mm -hmm. do, do they? Yeah. Uh, they and do. and, and they have a job to do in scrolling. But unless they have truly news that, you know, All if, right. if, if QD is okay. being in danger, we'll see what they happens. Can it might cool be the it. lead topic next mm -hmm. week. We're going to take your uh, comments on tonight's show. You can write us, care of KETC, 3655 Olive Street, St. Louis, Missouri, 63108. Those emails, letters at KETC.org, and those tweets, hashtag DonnybrookSTL, because Ray and Wendy will read them in just a matter of moments. Don't forget, you can follow us on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and tune in. It's our brand new Donnybrook podcast. We are now in 2019. Welcome to it. All right, folks, we'll see you again next week. Be safe and don't touch that dial because Ray and Wendy will be right back. Donnybrook is made possible by the members of the Nine Network. Welcome back. It's Donnie Brook. Your turn with the star of oh, our program, the one and only what? Ray Hartman. Yeah. And uh, I will be his co-pilot tonight. And we're looking forward to hearing what's on your mind because it was a, another lively show. So uh, Let's go to Jean from Oakville. Hey, Jean, what's on your mind? Hi, Jean. Well, I want to talk about the merger. Supposing just for um, thinking about it, supposing there is the consolidation. And then St. Louis and St. Louis County decide they're not big enough. And then they decide they want to annex St. Charles County. Then they want to annex Jefferson County. All this by a vote of the state. I don't think it's right. I think right. the people who are affected are the ones who should vote on this, not out state. Because everybody around the state could start annexing other counties. I agree with you, and I, 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 I happen to be somebody that would like to see a more united St. Louis. I've always favored a city-county merger, um, but I think you have a great point. And the math is such that I think about an 8% margin outstate would offset about a 2 to 1 margin against, in, um, if, if that was in favor, about a 2 to 1 margin in, in St. Louis County. So the math is such that... Um, Outstate may make this decision, 
And I think one other thing, your, your idea, if this included Jefferson and, and St. Charles County, it would be more saleable as true regionalism than this one is. This really has, um, the city-county uh, combination, whatever you think of it, is not going to uh, help regionalism because less than half of our region, as, by the, as defined by the census, lives uh, in the city and county. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Gene. And uh, let's move on now to Bob in De Pair. Hi, Bob. Welcome. You're on Donnie Brook. Your turn. Welcome to the show, Bob. Hello. I'm interested in talking about the uh, Michael Brown, uh, Darren Wilson case. I think, unfortunately, too much load has been put on this case. And it seems to me that people want to put it in terms of uh, uh, black rights rather than looking at it in economic terms. In other words, why are people disproportionately mistreated, whether they're black or whether they're poor whites, as the case may be? And I think part of it has to do with an unwillingness in this country to consider class as an important issue. And the fact that they have not... Uh, done the things that need to be done to protect the interest of uh, poor, poor black people, and black people are disproportionately poor. And there's many uh, of the white people that are making so much money and are undertaxed that if we took our society and looked more like Europe and taxed our rich people more and took care of our overall population better, we wouldn't have all these issues bubble up to the surface and not deal with the real questions that are behind all of this. Okay. And well, therefore, I think this needs to be looked at in that light rather than simply in do the facts support or don't they support a conviction, indictment, or whatever. Because uh, the general public can't easily determine that without looking at all of the facts. So would you like to see this case prosecuted again? Wait, Bob, before you go, are you still there? Yes, right. Okay, Ray wanted to... Just, just do you, would you like to see Wesley Bell bring a, a prosecution again? Yeah, see, that's that's begging the question. What I would oh. like to see is okay. is moving on... No, no, we, are, yeah, we, got, we got that, okay. Doing, doing okay. with other things and not concentrating okay. on whether or not there's guilt or innocent got in it. one case. Now, okay, thank do you. Do you, not, do you support... Depends on the facts... Hmm of that case. I would support it if the facts support it, and they should be looked at as facts and, and, and as an individual case. Would you say that you, do you subscribe to socialism as, as opposed to capitalism? That sounds a little bit yeah, more, no, seriously, yeah, I, that's a, 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 that's I would just I would ask you to look at what recently happened in France and uh, all of the uh, uh, upheaval when it came to uh, Emmanuel Macron. And I think that was a, a week or so of some of the most violent unrest that that France has ever seen. So that was just just throwing okay. that out there, Bob. Well, we appreciate but you made the call, some great Bob. points. Thank you. Thank you so much for calling. Let's go to Fred from Florissant. Hi, Fred. Hi, Fred. Uh, Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, yes sir. sir. Oh, OK. Uh, I, when I have topics, I've uh, been kind of drifting up about the uh, mergers. They seem to be centering around police, one form or another, although the one is for the total government. So I thought I'd do a little research. Mm -hmm. uh, I got on Wikipedia, and the U.S. Department of Justice, Census, State, Local Law Enforcement Agencies shows from 2004 to 2008 the number of full-time sworn Police personnel was 100,000, uh, was 251 per 100,000 residents. My concern is that we're going into this, if policing is a number one concern, we're going into this assuming that merging is going to do some magic, when really, uh, if you look at uh, departments around the city and the county, uh, I don't think we're anywhere near 250. I was told that. Uh, some agencies have uh, that have like uh, 
Uh, some cities that have like uh, 50,000 have 90 uh, sworn officers. Mm-hmm. A sworn officer, of course, being one that can right. make the rest and scope of the illicit uh, of the explicit legal authority. I don't think I think we need to be cognizant of where we're at in terms of how many police, smart police officers are actually there to handle the issues. Do we have enough? Fred, I think and that's an interesting. To that, okay. Yeah, I think that's a great point and yeah, actually an interesting one that some of us in journalism ought to take a look at. That's an, a statistic I hadn't seen, and I think it's. Uh, I think it's really worth looking at. I think that's an interesting uh, we thank, perspective. We thank you for that, Fred. We hope you will call again soon. We have a first-time caller, Bill from Rock Hill. Hi, Bill. <laughs> Welcome to the program. How you doing, Bill? What's on Good your evening. mind tonight? I wanted to comment about the NBA possibly coming back. Uh-huh. Now, I'm old enough. I saw the NBA play here when it was here back in the 60s. I saw the St. Louis Hawks play twice. I also saw the ABA entry we had here briefly, the Spirits. And, of course, before those teams, we had the St. Louis Bombers. I think they were like late 40s, early 50s. Mm -hmm. They were the Basketball Association of America. And, you know, I like, we've had a revolving door of professional basketball teams here. I realistically do not see the NBA ever coming back here. I found it a little amusing that one of the teams, I think it was Alvin that mentioned, that was thinking about moving was, the Hawks, who left here back in 1968, right, right. Uh, we actually had an NBA championship here once, believe it or not, in 1957. 57-58. Yeah. Yep, yeah. We did. And the thing is, you know, I, I think the big thing that ra- actually ran the Hawks out of town was the Blues. Once we got professional hockey right. here, the two could not compete. And right. I always thought the Spirits might have right. done better if they had lowered their ticket prices mm. so that well, more Bill, people could have gone to their games. But Bill, they, I... They tried the blues did. Bill, I had a, uh, I had a bu- button in uh, the Hawks will make it true in 62 was one of their slogans. I was, uh, I'm sadly old enough to remember from childhood when the Hawks won the championship. And I, I like you, I kind of sentimental about those days, but um, the economics of supporting an NHL and an NBA team at the same time are, are very challenging and they're pretty much limited to markets that are larger than St. Louis. And that's just, that's not running down St. Louis or being negative or anything else. It's just, uh, I would be very surprised if uh, th- there was enough support. Is in that and I don't you... think it's about race. I mean, I think that wa- it was, race was a big factor in the 60s. There's no question. The, the Hawks played a Keele Auditorium. Race was a big issue back then. And of course, race is, may still be an issue in our, in our, in our city, in our county, but, but that isn't, I don't think, I don't think there's, that would be the problem now. I don't think that's the issue now. It's matter market size and this, how big a sports pie there is. And, but good for Mr. Chavitz that he wants to do it. Yeah. I mean, yep. Lots of new ideas out there. So Bill, we thank you very much. Thanks. Time to go to the uh, Twitter verse. All right, let's go to Sister Sarah 23. Back on Better Together? It has, hasn't been proposed yet. Aren't there more pressing issues that we could, we could be discussing? How is the shutdown affecting STL attractions? What about the snowstorm coming in? These are more newsworthy than better together. Thank you for that thought. At Sims 2106, we have over 50 municipal police departments. That's ridiculous. Most only exist to give traffic tickets. Cough, Bella Villa cough. It's time to fix the mistakes of our past and reunite city and county Please. at Sims 2106. Sims 2106 got a ticket. Um, Captain <laughs> Wyo writes, tweets, over 50 years ago, there was talk of consolidation of the 26 fire districts in the county. A handful of them have since merged. Another 200 years and that may be done so we can go on to the cities and county merging LOL. Thanks for that one. At Liz Will, <laughs> I couldn't agree with you more. It's like picking a scab. Thanks for that image, Bill. <laughs> I love that. Your, uh, your tweets are also welcome at hash, hashtag Donnybrook STL. All right, let's go to Todd from Jefferson County. Hi, Todd. What's on your mind? Hi, Todd. Yeah, just a couple of things. In simple terms, when you look at the merger between the city and county, mm-hmm. you streamline the government and reduce the cost of it. 
I mean, there's some issues with people having I- individual uh, 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 special issues for each neighborhood. But when you have problem areas that affect the entire region, the, the resources of the, the entire area can be focused on, on serving one area so that other areas don't suffer that are nearby. Uh, beyond that, this new prosecutor for the county, he might have a few problems coming up with the money for all this rehab. That, that's the only issue there. But, I mean, it's a good humanitarian idea. I just don't know how it'll function. But at any rate, that's my thoughts. Thanks, Todd. Thanks, Todd. I happen to really, I'm still skeptical about how much money will be saved by merging the city and county. Because you take something like street, let's just say trash collection, the fact is a certain amount of trash is there to be collected from a certain number of people. Right. Certain number of people riding the trucks, doing the work. It does that the task, the collective task doesn't become any smaller based on how many governmental units are delivering the service. So I'm not sure why when it comes to actually delivering services. Uh, it's a good good call. I, I will say this, the city and county already do work together on tourism, for example, through this and, and convention business, through the CVC, uh, the major case squad, you have cooperation between police right. departments. So it's not like there's no cooperation at all now. Um, but um, it's an interesting comment from Todd, and we appreciate it. And Todd, you're right about uh, Wesley Bell, and he is being, uh, you know, he's he's being a little closed mouth when it comes to the, the the details, and we all know that the devil resides in the details, and uh, it's early, and we'll give him time to to tell us exactly where this additional money is going to come from. But you are a, a welcome call anytime. So thanks, Todd. Let's go to Bob in Edwardsville. Hi, Bob. Welcome. You're on Donnie Brook. Your turn. What's on your mind? The people that voted for Wesley Bell get ready for four years of a publicity hound. Doesn't he know that compulsory drug treatment doesn't work, has never worked? If you want to eliminate the opioid epidemic, you need to eliminate the use of fentanyl. Tylenol 3 works just as well as fentanyl does. It's not addictive. Okay. Well, thanks, Bob. I'm one of the people who voted for him, and I, I, um, I look at it a little differently. I think he's the most, in terms of scrutiny per days on the office, in, in office, he's set some kind of record. Well, that's because he he's done more, some things to be scrutinized, No, but right? I'm just saying he's I been, mean, no, but even before he got here, there were, you know, Bob McCullough was disqualifying judges, and they were talking about all kinds of things that were going to go wrong before he even took his office. I, you know, as I say, let, let, let him settle in. Um, I like the fact that we have a, a prosecuting attorney, and, and again, not to disparage uh, his predecessor, but I do think the fact that he's talking about strategies, to, particularly with nonviolent offenders, to keep them from getting worse and to actually address the core pro, uh, the core of the problem, I think, is a is a good thing he's doing. I, I think a lot of it comes across, at least at this at this stage, as some social engineering, and people want him to enforce the laws. And so we'll have to wait and see. Boy, that's harsh. Let's yeah. go to Richard from <laughs> South County. It's really not. Yeah, I know. Richard from South County. What's on your mind? Hi, Richard. Wendy and Ray, I just. I'm 85 years old, and I worked at the brewery for a long time, and then I went, when I retired, I went to work over at Caseworth, so I feel part of the family, because I'm a life uh, contributor, but I just, I, I just happen to agree with everything you guys said tonight, which is probably unusual, because I'm kind of a crabby old man, but <laughs> I just uh, enjoyed it immensely, and uh, I just want to Keep keep plugging Channel 9 okay. because that's about the only channel I watch anymore. Well, you're very kind. And um, and we're two crabby old we're, people, we're, too, yeah, so okay. got and that in common. And this is a beer town, <laughs> as we've established. And uh, it's also, we're very uh, grateful to the Gatesworth for yes, their support. We are. So, yes, uh, we are. Yes, we are. Thank you <laughs> on both counts. Thank you, Richard. Thanks a lot I, for the great Did you count. have anything you wanted to talk about? No. Just, okay. Uh, to, if uh, if the Cardinals still have Greg Garcia, 
I wish that his grandpa, who's a cousin of mine, David Garcia, I wish he would have taught Greg how to hit. Then we wouldn't have to work in a big bomber. We gotta, Richard, uh, I think we got to get Richard, you on the you, show. You need to be a Thank regular, Richard. Thank you so much for the call. We appreciate you it. You made our night. Thanks. Thank you. Let's go to Dave in Webster Groves. Hi, Dave. Welcome. You're on Donnie Brook. Your turn. That's a tough act to follow. <laughs> it is, and, and, and I won't even try. Uh, Wendy and Ray, my question is, before we can seriously think about merging and uniting St. Louis City and St. Louis County, should we first think about merging and uniting some, if not all, of the 90 municipalities within St. Louis County? For example, I live in Webster Groves, and a lot of these cities are smaller, 23,000, 25,000 people. We operate like functional silos. Mm -hmm. But Webster's sister cities are like Rock Hill, Shrewsbury, Brentwood, Maplewood, Glendale, Warsaw Woods, Kirkwood. You know, we right. should all combine right. and unite well, to be one one city. And so what, that's my question. What do that's people, a, how do people react? We know how Kirkwood reacts, at least uh, our panelist who represents the great right. state of Kirkwood, or the right. great city of Turk Kirkwood. Um, right. How do your neighbors react to it, Dave? Well, you know, actually, pretty favorably, you know, we have our central newspaper every week is the Webster Kirkwood Times, mm -hmm. and we share a newspaper, and there isn't any reason, and we share right. fire departments. I mean, when there's fires, they go back and forth, police departments, so it's not like we don't share at all, but should we go for the full Monte, so right. to speak? Well, let me say this. The Webster Kirkwood yeah. Times, by the way, is one of the great underrated institutions of our time. Uh, the yes. guys there have been fighting the good fight in a, in a, for, for I think so 40, long. I want to say 41 <laughs> years, 40 yeah. years. Uh, wonderful, yeah, wonderful years. newspaper. And it's still serving its communities uh, well. Um, I agree with you. I mean, I've been long an advocate of, you know, for example, the concept of combining police departments that are simply too small to have the resources yes. and, and so forth. And the, the big, the word you use that's interesting here is before we do this, the, the biggest problem I have with this at this point is we aren't going to be making the call. That the strategy, which I have a problem with, is that the people of city and county, the city and county are going to be force fed their future governance and as I said last week, I waffled a little bit this week, but I really think the odds are that it will pass statewide. And um, it's going to be a very interesting, I, I think it's the most important governance issue of, of our lifetimes. And it is going to be with us. We're probably going to have 100 shows talking about At this least. between now and the end of 2020. <laughs> so thanks for the call. We do appreciate it. Thanks, Dave. And I think we're back to the Twitterverse. And who's up? On Amos, just move the Blues out for an NBA team. 50 plus years of losing and false hope has become a national embarrassment. Well, I, I'm a big NBA fan, but I'm a bigger Blues fan, so I can't go with that. He would not. He would not go with that. I there is go. no I way. Thank you, though, for the uh, for the tweet at Miss Jupiter 1957. New Life Evangelistic Center is a church. Pastor Redlick is a pastor. Why does the city of St. Louis think they have the right to violate the religious liberty of a pastor to follow the words Jesus actually said and enforce business ordinances on a church? Okay, then I have Nick, many opinions, but I will. Well, you can talk about it. At, go ahead. You go ahead. Go ahead. At yeah. Nan Chai XOX. <laughs> Why no mention of Sheila Sweeney on St. Louis's and economic develop part, development partnership? Because we have a hard and fast policy on Donnybrook. If there is no disagreement, we do not discuss the topic. I hope that helps at Nan. I will say I like Sheila Sweeney personally, but I, we, we didn't have it as a topic to discuss tonight. Holy Star writes, justice delayed is justice denied. However, you view the Brown case, there should have been a trial to prove out the facts of the case in a court of law. And finally, Brian L. Nine. For years you've talked on the show about the problems between all the little cities in the county and the city-county being separate. 
Now that there's a solution, none of the county living Donny Brooks, Brookers, Brooks, want to merge the city into their backyard. What gives? Well, um, I, I'll, I will respond to that one. I'm, uh, as a, uh, I happen to have long felt and continue to feel, in fact, I, going back to the 80s, that the city and county should merge. And I still feel that way. And I think we ought to, and I would love it if we could come up with a one government I actually don't have a problem with a big government solution, but I do have a big problem with the process and the rest and of the, the fall. state of Missouri. Forced I, I have a, process, a, a real problem with this being dictated by the rest of the state, and I have a problem with some of the kind of absurd claims about us being a top 10 city and all this other just silly nonsense that um, this is not going to address regionalism and it's not going to make us a bigger place. And... Um, I, having said that, I'd love to see the city and county. Merge. I would too. So, I absolutely um, would. But uh, thank you for the, for the tweets and keep them coming. Let's go to Chrissy in Florissant. Hi, Chrissy. Hi, Chrissy. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. I was call, calling in about um, Alvin's suggestion about making 20 sandwiches for uh -huh. people who um, are in need or hungry and. Um, yeah, he had mentioned that people uh, haven't been targeted uh, for giving out food, but mm -hmm. for the last 15 years, the city of St. Louis has been targeting people, uh, giving out food to people on the streets. And um, some of it started at Hobo Park next to the library like 15 years ago. And, um, okay. and it continues to this day, especially targeting Mary Rice that wasn't, too many years ago on uh, Christmas Eve Eve where Larry Rice, um, the uh, city alderman, had decided to shut him down. And I think the city hasn't had a comprehensive approach um, to that. But I wanted to make a plug for uh, St. Louis Winter Outreach who have been going out on the streets um, giving food and um, yeah. blankets and stuff to people. And so... Right. Well, we thank you for that. We're yeah. very, we're very glad you called. You. And uh, I think Ray said it best earlier that just because a portion of the population may not have a place to to live, uh, they still should be protected. Their their health should still be protected. And I applaud anybody who works as as diligently to to help the poor, to feed the poor, to clothe the poor. Um, as, as the New Life Evangelistic Center and all of the people uh, separate from the New Life Evangelistic Center who do that. But there, there are rules to follow, and I don't believe that, uh, that the city of St. Louis is being punitive in, in, in this regard. They've got to look after the health and well-being of, of everybody, homeless or not. Are we That's in well agreement said. on that? Who's next? Otto in Kirkwood. Hi, Otto. Hi, Otto. Yes, good evening. Thank you. I enjoy your show. Thank you very much. Thank you. I very much agree with Ray and many others that the process regarding the city-county consolidation is extremely flawed, and to open this up to a state-wide vote is uh, gamesmanship on the part of uh, Rex Singfield and others. But my question is this. I had heard uh, up until about a week or 10 days ago that the leading concept of consolidation was that the city was going to join, was going to join the county as its 92nd or 93rd, whatever the number is, right. municipality. Right. That, well, that was uh, a con that's been that, a concept for a long time. And to me, that seems like a relatively more uh, palatable concept in the context of. Let's go slow and right. assimilating the organizations. And now it seems, it se it, you know, okay. with that concept, the city would still stand alone. We right. wouldn't have to worry about pension plans, et cetera. Right. And, uh, you know, why not go slow and crawl before we walk approach? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Appreciate that call. I mean, I, I, I feel good. We, I think we have time for one more call. Do we? A really Ron quick from one. Sular. You're going to have to be quick, but you're our last caller tonight. Hi, What's Ron. on your mind, Ron? Well, quickly, I'd like to say one thing. No matter how we vote, we voted against uh, the stadiums. We voted against gas tax. We voted against a lot of things. And the politicians turn around and do what they want anyway. 
Lewis Reed is going to be building and trying to build another stadium. Even if we try to stop them by voting against them, they go out and they just turn it around. Or re- we voted against uh, the alderman. They want to rerun that. Everything is going to be their way or no way. Okay. All right, well, I think that's going to have to be the last word tonight. We want to thank all of you for watching. We'll see you again next Thursday night. Uh, Have fun in the snow. You bet. Thank you.